had Maria Janay talking to uh, Nazim Setin. He is the CEO of Allianz X, which is uh, the insurance company's venture capital arm. He spent two billion dollars on 29 different AI companies. Some of them are going, you know, gangbusters. So he was talking about how they make those investments, why they make those investments, and what's the relationship between Allianz and, and all the different companies that they're investing in and why Allianz is doing this. They have a very, very strong AI focus in their investment portfolio. We heard from our academic directors, Maria Gine and Javier Zamora, doing what we call a red thread review, which is trying to connect the dots of the whole day. Uh, they made the point again that AI is a general purpose technology. Uh, it's going to change the world just like steam engines, just like electricity, just like the computer itself. And they talked about the four levels of analysis, which have been kind of feeding out through the day. Uh, how AI affects people, how AI affects organizations, how it affects markets, and what its impact on geopolitics. Uh, it's going to get noisy here. Uh, people are starting to come downstairs from the auditorium. Mallory, what's next for us? I, no, nobody leave because we are coming back in just a couple of minutes with Dean Haukamp. But before we do that, Mallory, what's next? So what's next is we have Billy Gray, who's actually here with some of the alumni who've just finished the sessions. Billy, over to you. Thanks, Mike and Mallory. Yep, the academic program of this year's GAR has come to an end, but we still have a few events pending. Uh, the, the nice dinner tonight, there are in fact two dinner options, and then there's a bike tour tomorrow. More time for bonding between old classmates um, and new friends alike. I'm here with two ESA alumni, uh, Maria Prieto and Atul Panda. Uh, they're gonna talk a little bit about their experience at the event. Um, Maria, I'll start with you. Uh, first of all, was this your first time attending the GAR? It is. It is the first time uh, I do a lot of online events, but I've never been physically. Very cool. And what would you say was maybe a highlight of the event for you? Well, of course, the networking is excellent. I'm looking forward to next week to connect to all uh, the people that I met here. But especially, I like very much the speech on geopolitical effects on AI and especially technology. I mean, I come from Airbus Defense and Space, and we have the same critical situation. In, on one side, we want to be global. Uh, because of having access to workforce and, co and, and uh, competences and also because diversity, we know it's, it's the key for the innovation of new technologies. But on the other side, we have the fears of this geo geopolitical instability and uh, we want to become local. So this balance is something that uh, was really good explained by uh, Dr. Matze and uh, Mrs. Martinez and I loved that speech. So thank you. Thank you for coming. And I forgot to ask you, what was your program and the year you graduated? So I did the PDD Madrid in 2009. Very good. Thank you. And Atul, how about you? Uh, what's your year and program? So I'm really fresh. Uh, I did the Munich EMBA program 2022. So just about three months ago. So this is obviously your first GAR. Yes, and I'm really enjoying it. So you, you've, you've enjoyed yourself. Did you also have a highlight, a session that you particularly enjoyed that was especially compelling to you? Yeah, I, I like most of the sessions. This gives a very good perspective over the industrial use of AI and the business model sense. But the new tech uh, talk that was done with, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, alumni from, from Tencent, that was really very, very interesting. I got to learn a lot of new things which I was not aware of. For example, quantum computing, food tech, med tech, and all those things were really very, very cool. Very good. So before we go back to the set, uh, tell us, are, do you plan on attending other GARs in the future? Has this been a good experience? Maria, you first? Yeah, for sure. Not only that, I have uh, come with some of my team members, and I have encouraged them to really do this program. They're really amazed about what ESA does and, and how we network here and what how useful this type of events are. Yeah. Excellent. That's good to hear. And I told you too, will this be, uh, this is just the first of many, hopefully. Do you plan to uh, attend again? Absolutely. The experience has been fantastic. Meeting old friends, making new, nothing to comp uh, complain about. So I'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to attend many more. Uh, Maria, I heard you talk to Atul earlier. He's a brand new alum. You're you're new, but you know you've been been 13 years out of the program. You said you have so much to look forward to, Atul, in terms of the benefits and the networking. Can you explain a little bit the value of being an ESA alumni alumnus and how it builds over time the the advantages you get from that? So on one side, I renovate, I do certain courses, especially online. So I renovate my uh, skills and and know-how. 
especially for networking. I like that a lot. So I tend to pick uh, from uh, my old colleagues some ideas. I have a sparring partners as well from the alumni network. And sometimes I even use for business purposes some consultations to some of the uh, professors and, and, and some of the areas that uh, the ESA uh, uh, practices. So it, I really encourage the people to use the alumni network. It's really, really interesting. Excellent. And Atul, a question for you because you're, you're again, a very recent alum. Were you able to reconnect with any of your classmates or were you able to make new friends? Obviously, Maria is now one of them, uh, but able to meet new people and sort of feel, even though you're a new alum, part of that community of over 50,000 people. How do, you, how do you feel? Is that a strong bond there? Absolutely. So with, with the colleagues that I've been in classes very recently, got to meet with them. And of course, I, I met a lot of new people here and everybody was so positive. Uh, about uh, the atmosphere was very good. People got accepted very, very quickly. So I'm really uh, fortunate to be in this community. Excellent. Thank you very much, both of you, for being here and for talking to us. And go ESA alumni. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And we're going back to the set now to say farewell. So thanks, Billy. That was a, that was a great uh, great session. Uh, it's our pleasure to have Franz Haukampa with us here on the set. Uh, we've actually been chasing each other all day. We've been trying to get him on the set. He's been very busy with a whole bunch of stuff. He finally agreed to come down uh, at, at the end of the day. Franz, I've just got one question for you, if you can kind of wrap this up for the three or 4,000 people online. At the very beginning of the day, you talked about the power of AI and the power of AI to do good. Now, in our, in our day, we spent a lot of time talking about all the power. We've tried to talk about the good and maybe even, maybe even some of the dark side of AI. Do you feel that we've covered this, these both issues properly or, or do you think we're, we're on the right track in terms of talking about how to use your power for good? Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Mallory. Thanks, Billy, for also doing this wonderful job here during the day to keep the ESA TV going. Um, so so I, th I think we have talked a lot about opportunities that AI has as a technology to solve problems. So I think the, in that sense, the, the good in the opportunities, I think, became, became quite apparent. Um, I think we have talked quite a bit, we've heard quite a bit about challenges that we have on the policy side, uh, challenges that we have also on maybe the organizational supply chain, uh, geopolitical um, challenges that we have. I think we have still way to go to talk a little bit about the problems that the technology per se could produce. I think we have not talked a lot about, you know, some of the things that um, you know, you know, some um, scientists predict, namely that technology could sort of become self-perpetuating. You know, we talk, uh, Dario mentioned a little bit that debugging could be automated by an artificial intelligence algorithm, which also points to the fact that, you know, if you can start programming yourself this way, um, that this could lead to an acceleration. He, he didn't want to get into you know, the question of the, um, you know, the singularity. Um, but I think there is, there, is a, there is an open topic here that, uh, that, is, that we need to continue to talk about, I think. Fantastic, Franz. Thank you so much. And now Maria Rios did a great job thinking a lot of people who had a lot to do with this program uh, from the Alumni Association, from the logistics, all that. I'd also like to say you know, a special thanks to, to Carlos, to, to Oriol, to, to Edu, and to the whole technical team, which you guys have no idea about this. You know, you see me, Mallory, and Billy running around. What you don't see is all the other people who actually make this three or four hours, I think four hours of broadcast, you know, from Nestor to Miguel to, to, to uh, Mauricio, who's the kind of the master of ceremonies. Can we, do we have a shot of, of the guys in the back? Can we, can we show that? So, you know, you see us over here, but in fact, there's an army of people who are, who are here making this happen. So let me just say thank you to all of them. Thank you to all of you for watching and, and putting up with our, 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 our things. And really, good luck. I hope you can use your power for good and have a great rest of the evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you and good night.